Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can build an app like LinkedIn where uh, users can sign up, then they can fill out their account, add work experience, and then post on their feed, you know, to so the whole community page. And then, yeah, we'll just see where it goes from there. But I'm really excited to build this, and I hope you are too. So let's build LinkedIn. Let's go. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up the terminal. So we're just going to open up the shell. This always takes a second to load for me because I'm on Ubuntu. Or no, I'm on Windows, but I'm using a Ubuntu shell. Hey, let me know in the comments how many people are doing this or or let me know what platform you are. I'm kind of interested. All right, now I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new Rails app by typing the Rails new command. Then we're going to need a name for the app. So I'm going to call this LinkedIn Rails. And then I'm going to set some options, but these are completely optional. So for database, I'm going to use Postgres. And for CSS framework, I'm going to use Tailwind. Now it's nice to do this in the generator when we're first creating the app, because then it's already set up when we get started. And Tailwind will work with things like scaffolding too. But that's completely optional. You can also add it later. <laughs> All right, so we generated. Now I'm going to CD into the app, LinkedIn Rails. And I'll start the server with bin slash dev, which will allow us to go and view the app at localhost port 3000. Now we see this little screen because we need to create the database. After we do that, then we'll see that we're on the Rails logo. And that means that everything's set up and we're ready to start building our app. So this is perfect. Now, I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add user accounts just to get started before we even make any pages. So for users, I'm going to use a gem called device. So I'm going to go into the console, we'll type bundle add device. And I'm also going to actually add a second gem, which is tailwind device, which I made in a previous video, but it will style the sign in and sign up pages to be pretty. Because in my early videos, I used to do that every episode. It was crazy. All right, so now that we added the gem, we can install device with Rails G device colon install. This will set up everything we need for device. And then there's a few things that they tell us to do, like setting the root and then adding alerts to the app. So let's quickly add alerts. I usually do this. So let's just open up Visual Studio code, or you can use any code editor. And then we'll open up the code for this new app. All right. Now inside of here, I'm going to go into the app folder, the views, the layouts and the application file. Now inside of here, I need to put the alerts uh, right inside of the body, but at the top. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to render a partial. So I'll call this layout slash alerts. And then I'll have to create that new partial over here in the layouts folder. So to create a partial, you just make a file and you start it with an underscore. So it's underscore alerts .html .erb. Now. Uh, if you're already familiar with Rails, all of the files use HTML.erb extensions, which allows you to embed a Ruby. So everything like this with the uh, the bracket percent equal, that means it's embedded Ruby code. So this is actually Ruby, but then this part is just HTML. So it's pretty cool. But I'm just going to drop this HTML. This is actually a mix of HTML and then Ruby code for the notice and the alert. It's pretty interesting. We're just going to render the alerts and that's that. Now we still don't have a root or anything, and we also still don't have uh, the user yet, the user model. So that's the next step. They also say we can generate the views, but instead of the regular one, I'm going to do Rosie Tailwind device colon views, which was added by my gem, the Tailwind device gem. And then this will add some pretty uh, views for device. And then from here, we have to create the user model. This is the next step. We have to do Rosie device. And then user to create the user model. And then we can just migrate the database. All right, now if we go back, we still shouldn't see a difference because we don't even have any pages yet. So we have to think like, where, where's the first thing that we're going to add? Hmm. Maybe just like the home page. I don't even know what we call that. Maybe we'll call that like the posts. Because I know there are going to be posts. So let's do, yeah, scaffold some posts. Let's do Rails scaffold posts. Posts will have a title body let's do rich text because in linkedin they do have a really good text editor so rich text will kind of get us halfway there rich text is already built in with rails by the way uh, although we will have to do an installer right after this so we generate the new model title body oh and also user say user belongs to 
just to set that up. And then we're also going to need to do Rails action text colon install. And then from here, we can migrate the database. And it'll add our user model. Or no, we already added the user model, but it'll add the post model. And it'll also add all the stuff for action text. Perfect. I think we're about set up, actually. If we want to start the server again, we just need to go and change the root. So back in the code, if we go to the config rats.rb, I'm just gonna uncomment this root at the bottom, which is already going to the post index, which since I just created a post controller, or I created a post scaffold, so we already have it set up. And now when we go to localhost 3000, we see our post page. So this is basically what our initial LinkedIn is gonna look like, except for we're gonna want it to display all the posts for all the users. So we're gonna have to mess with the controller a little bit. Uh, let's just do that real quick before we even get started. Because also when we press new post, uh, look, there's a field for user. Uh, so yeah, let's start with the new post. Let's remove the user field because that got ad added by the scaffold. But we don't want someone to be able to like change the user of the post. We want it to be based off the user. And also we should make the user have to sign in before they can even view this page. Or before they can view anything in the app. So let's do that first. Let's restrict the whole app and make sure that a user has to sign in. Because that's what they do in LinkedIn, I'm pretty sure. So to do that, we'll go into the app and the controllers folder and the application controller. The application controller is where all of the other controllers inherit from. So if we do anything here, it'll get included in all the other controllers. So what we're going to do is just a before action to authenticate user. Now this is already built in with device. So we have this method. And then when we try to reload just anywhere in the app, even just going to the root page, It'll make us sign in first. Whoops. Just go to Logos. Now it says you need to sign up before continuing. All right. So let's say that we're going to go create a new account to sign up. Well, there's a few things that are missing for LinkedIn. Like email is good, password is good, but we probably need like the name. That's pretty important for LinkedIn. So let's get a first name, last name. Let's add that on. So to add that, I'm going to first add the migration to the database. So we'll go into the console do real team migration all right let's just say add name fields to users and then we're going to have first name last name which by default will already be the type string so just do it just like that and we can run this migration and now let's take a look at what this generated so i'll cat this file and you'll see it's just a simple migration to add a first name to the user's model and also add a last name and it's going to be type string. So from here, let's do a rails db migrate. Migrate the server. And I'll just restart real quick. Now there's a few things that we're going to have to do. We're going to have to edit the actual registration form. So right here, all we have is the email, password, password confirmation. So I'm going to add in the first name, last name field. So to do that, we're going to go back into our app. And let's head over to the app folder, the views, and then the device folder. Now, if you don't have a device folder, it's because you didn't generate the views yet. So if you're using my gem, the Tailwind device gem, make sure to do that. But if you're not, then you have to do Rails G device colon views to, to move that folder over. And then you can still follow along with this guide. All right, so we're gonna go into device, registrations new. And now right on top of the email, we're gonna have those new fields. So I'm just gonna copy this I don't know if it'll really make it easier. <laughs> it'll be first name. First name instead of email field, it's text fields. Yeah, screw that. I'm not gonna I'm gonna copy from this one. Alright, and then we don't need autocomplete. We don't need autofocus either. That's only really needed for the email. Also, I don't think autofocus, I don't think we need this anymore because the, the name is on top. So we're gonna have first name. I'll copy this. I'll change this to last name. All right. Now we're going to be able to collect these new fields from the user. First name, last name. And we have email and then the password and everything. All right. Perfect. And then if you wanted to, like, I know usually the forms, they'd have the first name like squished and then the last name, but I'm just going to leave it like this. I think that's still fine. First name, last name, or we could even do full name if we wanted to do that. But I'm not really going to handle that in this tutorial. All right. Now we need to permit those new options on the device controller. So to do that, I actually did this in a previous video. 
what was it? Linktree. Wait, was it? No, it wasn't Linktree. Oh, it was. Because we did a username for Linktree. Okay. So we have to copy this code and put that into our app. Oh, whoops. Looks like I closed out. All right, so in the application controller, we just have to add this code, which is another before action uh, that only runs if it's the device controller. And then in here, we're gonna add more things that we permit. So instead of username, it's just first name and then last name. And now these will be able to be saved in device. Perfect. So then we're all set. Uh, so let's just say Indigo Tutorials. Oh, it didn't match. Dang it. <laughs> I'm literally just spamming numbers. Okay. So, boom. Signed up. Hello. Welcome. You've signed up. Perfect. So now we've signed up and it should have stored our name too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add... From here, I'm going to add a nav bar probably. And then we can show the name. But I'm going to just quickly go in the console and let's check on that user and see what it is. So if we just go in the console, we stop the server, type rail C... Then we get into the Ruby shell and I can just do user.last and I can see we got the first name and we got the last name. This is pretty cool. And then if we wanted to add a method like full name, we probably will. You see there's no method, but that's actually really simple to add. If we go back in the code, we're going to go to the models and we'll go to the post model. All right. Or <laughs> wait, what I'm saying, we're going to go to the user model. And then we're going to make a method called full name. You do that by just writing def full name. And then this will just be first name plus last name. Although there needs to be a space too. Hmm. What do we do? So I might do like first name, last name. Dot join. So take these two and it'll join together. And now if we went back in the console. User dot last. Now, full name. Uh, you'll see we get the full name just like that. Perfect. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and restart the server. We already have user accounts. We already have posts. This is really exciting. Oh, but we still need to update the UI. So see, now when you go to create a new post, it's actually like it still has the user field. So let's quickly remove that. We can do that by going into the views folder, post form. Now we're going to delete this user ID field right here. Now to follow up with that, we're going to go to the controllers, post controller, and we're going to change some stuff in here. So first of all, at the very bottom with the post params, we're going to delete the user ID from being permitted. That's very important for security because you don't want a user to be able to hack. Even if there's no field, they could still hack their own field, submit the form, and since you're permitting it, they'll be able to change it. So you have to be careful with stuff like that. And then now also on the create action, right here we're saying post equals post.new but we're never setting the user. So instead, I'm gonna change that to current user.post.new. Now, I don't think that the association is added on the user yet, on the user model. So we have to go over to the models, user.rb, and we have to hook it up to post. So if you look at the post model, it belongs to a user. So that was already set up by the scaffold, but we need to mix it so the user knows about the posts. So I'll just go in and add this code at the very top of the model, has many posts. And then now the association is set up correctly. And now you see there's no more fields. We can create a new post. And then boom, we have our first LinkedIn post. All right, I want to see what happens when we go back. So then we're seeing posts. And it's actually showing all the posts. It should show it from all the users. And that's kind of what I was wanting. So if we go incognito, we go to localhost. Oh, they're going to tell us to sign in. <laughs> Sorry, my test names are funny. I should be doing whatever. All right, so now we signed in as another user, right? Although we can't tell. Let's quickly add something to the, let's quickly add that nav bar. Let's go back in the app. Let's go in the views, layouts, application. All right, and then on top of the alerts, I'm actually going to render layouts nav bar. Come in here, create a new file called underscore nav bar to HTML to ERB. 
and then we'll create our first nav bar. It'll just be like a simple little box at the top of this page. And inside of here, I want to say if current user, you just put the current user dot full name. Actually, we could say signed in as that user. All right, now if we reload, you'll see we have this little nav bar at the top, signed in as that user. Now, I think I want to do justify and we'll make the text lighter. But this is just a very simple, simple nav bar. Doesn't even really have any functionality. But it just shows us that we're signed in. So we're signed in as Indigo Tech Tutorials. Signed in as Bob Bob. Now, the thing is, look. <clears throat> so first of all, the user, it is showing the user, but it's not showing, like, the name. So let's go and change up the post partial just so this looks a little bit more like it makes sense. Let's go back into the code. Let's go to the views, post, underscore post. Now, right here, instead of this whole user thing, I'm actually going to delete a lot of this. Like, we don't need all this margin. You just say posted by post.user.full name. We have the body. We have the title, which we also don't really need like all of this, all of those labels. So I'm kind of just cleaning this up a little bit. I'm changing the wrong part. <laughs> body. Yeah, it's probably fine to just leave it like that. Well, I don't even think we want to show like the body. I mean, maybe like the first little bit on the partial. I don't actually know how to do that. <clears throat> I know I've done it in a previous video though. Let's say we say post.last dot body. And I'm gonna try to see how I can get this body dot body. Oh I can do body dot body, then I could say text or something. HTML or no, what can I do? Let's try methods on it and see. Oh, to plain text, that's what I meant. Oh, so I lost that body to plain text. And then let's just grab like the first 20. I don't even know. Just for a little preview. I wonder if they already have a method for previews. But yeah, this looks kind of crazy. Body dot body to plain text, first 20. And then we probably ended with like dot dot dot. Right. Let's see, does this actually does that actually make any sense? <laughs> Let's try to create a new post that actually has content, like a lorem ipsum kind of thing. Oh, I think we turn off the server. Let's restart bin dev. I'm gonna look up some lorem ipsum. I'm gonna try to create a post with lorem ipsum, so it has like a bunch of freaking data. So let's create a new post. Arm Ipsum stuff. And we're gonna drop all of this in. Create post, and now we'll see what it looks like. Okay, it actually is not bad. So we have the title, and then we have the body. Maybe the title could be a bit bigger. So right up here, we could probably add like text XL, and then also maybe like make it a different kind of color too. Or maybe I just mean like make it bold. What is Lorem Ipsum? Posted by Indigo Tutorials. All right. And this is cool, although we don't even need a lot of this stuff. Like, why do we have... <clears throat> oh, because we're on the show page. I got it. All right, so see, this is, like, the difference, though. All right, but we're still showing the post partial. The question, though, now is we really shouldn't see the edit. So, look, I'm Bob Bob, but this was posted... These both were posted by Indigo Tech Tutorials. So why am I able to edit it? That's not right. That's not right. So we need to change this real quick. Uh, we'll go in this post partial and the edit we only ever want to show that add a condition if current user equals to post dot user and then this will actually just this simple thing will change a lot in our app i mean it won't change a lot but it'll protect the edit link so see this guy does have permission to edit but then this guy does not Although when you show it, we still show the edit link we destroy. So we have to go and add this condition uh, into the show page too. 
So if we go and show page, we'll see it's just those links right here. We can wrap it in our new condition. And then we have to also change this to at post instead of the post variable. And now you'll see this is what the post looks like on the page. Although probably on the show page, we wouldn't even want to use that partial. That partial I feel like is more for the feed. So on the actual post page, we'll probably have it more like put together. So we'll have a, a, a H1 for the post title. So that's pretty good. So when you go to the actual page, it's like a giant H1. And then we'll just do a div with some margin and then we'll put the body. Oh, actually right above this, we should say who it's posted by. So right above the H1, we'll say, let's just do a P posted by post.fullname. We'll end it off. Oh wait, not post.fullName, whoops, <laughs> post.user.fullName. So see, this is what the post looks like. New post, post by Indigo Tutorials. And then right underneath it, we would put the whole body. Let's render body and I'll have the whole thing. So now if I want to go and check out the Lorem Ipsum post, this is what it looks like. It actually looks pretty good. Yeah, already we have our little version of LinkedIn, where at least you can post posts, you can sign in as users. Although we don't have a profile, a page, and we don't have the work experience. So that's what I wanted to do next. All right, I'm gonna get started on the profile page. Go back to localhost. Oh, they want me to sign in again. I forgot my sign in. <laughs> oh, it was it. Okay, now I, I remember. Indigo tech at tech. Doc. Oh, come on. All right, and we log in. Now everything's good. So what I want to do is I want to make, I want to change this to like a, kind of like a regular profile picture you might see. And then when you click on it, it brings you to your profile. So to do that, I'll go back in the code. And oh, let me quickly collapse all this so it's easier to look at. And I'll go in the app, views, layouts, and then in the nav bar, partial. Now what I'll do is I'll increase the height of this whole nav bar a bit. Let's go to 16. Okay, and then I want to change this. So instead of like doing the whole names saying signed in, I want to actually just show the initials. So we don't have initials right now. We're gonna have to make that method. See undefined method initials for user. So let's quickly add that method in the models on the user model. So let's put it right after full name. We have a method called initials. Now actually initials is just going to basically take the first and last name and then map and <laughs> actually wait it is kind of silly but it's literally just taking the first and then joining it there's probably better ways to do this but this will work too yeah you see these are my initials it and then we're joining it actually you don't even join it with space funny enough uh, you join it without space because you want them to be right next to each other for initials and then now oh let's make some padding on this whole nav bar just to push it away from the edges. So I'll do PX. And let's also push it in the center. Item center. Now it should already be looking a little bit better. What we can do is we can put this inside of kind of like it's a round circle. We can add some padding. Make it be rounded large. And let's just do like a blue circle maybe. I don't really know. I think on LinkedIn it might just be like white. Doesn't really matter. Let's reload. Okay, we got our blue. Oh, rounded. I meant rounded full to make it an actual circle. Rounded full. You see, it's not really like a perfect circle though because we need to have more X padding and Y padding to make it more like rounded. I know it's it gets tricky, but I think that'll work. And then. You click on it, it'll bring you to your profile. So, 
wrap this whole div in a link. And we'll link to right now. There's nothing, so I'm just gonna do uh, the pound sign as like a default, as like a temporary link. Right now, it doesn't even go to anywhere. Oh, it looks like we had an issue. Um. Oh, there's a typo. I forgot to add the percent sign in that ruby. All right, so now when we click it, it actually, you see, it just brings us to the pound sign when we click it. What we want to do is we want to bring it to the profile page. But right now, we don't have a profile. <laughs> we don't have a profile page, so we're going to need to set that up. So to start off, I think let's go in the routes. Let's go config routes, and let's think about how the URL is going to be for our profile page. So I think what we do is, <clears throat> let's just do it up here get slash and it's gonna really be like the username but instead it's gonna be something called a slug so slug in web development is like the term for whatever's up here in the URL so let's say my name is indigo tutorials we'd want to be able to make a path like this and then this would be our slug so right now we actually don't have a slug on the user we're gonna need to add that so let's actually let's Let's go and edit this user. So to get to the edit page, we just go user slash edit. We should probably add a link here. We should do like a drop down on this. Actually, this this should actually be a drop down, and then it shows a few different links. So let's set that up real quick. Should be pretty easy. So we can go in the views, layouts, navbar, and then we are gonna need some JavaScript for this. Uh, but it should be pretty simple too. So I just make on this, I'm going to create a, a stimulus controller called dropdown. So I'll go back in the controller. I'll do relative stimulus dropdown. All right. Now we have a new dropdown controller. That's all we need to do. And then on the div, I'm going to add data controller dropdown. Then on the link, add data action dropdown hashtag toggle. And then now we're going to actually need a drop down. So I'll do another div. And this will be our drop down. This be like a little pop up. And this is also going to be absolute positioned. Top zero. So we're going to need to do some styling to make this right. So see like this is already kind of right, but we just need to push it down. So not top zero. It's actually going to be top 16. Gonna push it down enough so that it fits, and then now we'd want this to toggle, so we'd want it to start off hidden. But while we can see it, we can actually add those links real quick. Let's add a link to my profile. This right now we don't even have it set up, so we're just gonna do like that. And underneath we could have link to settings. Now settings we do have, so that would be I forget what it's called. Edit. Path. I think it's something like this. All right, yeah, so my profile settings. Now, see how they're right next to each other? We want to actually display it in a list. So, to do that, uh, let's just do another div inside. We'll say flex. Flex called gap of four. And then, really, the flex call is making them stack one on top of each other, and then the gap is adding a little bit of space. So, see, now there's space. And then if we want to push them away from the sides, we would just add padding. Oops. So I think P4 would do a good job. Reload. Okay, perfect. Now we see profile. That doesn't go anywhere, but settings, we are able to go there. And then what I'm going to do is in settings, that's where we're going to be able to change the slug. <clears throat> and we can do some validations on it. All right, but let's finish off with drop down. Because right now it still isn't working like toggling. All right, so... Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go back into, uh, we're already in the nav bar. So what I'm going to do is on this, this right here is going to be, we're going to add an uh, attribute, data drop down, target. We're going to say that this is the menu. And then we're also going to add a hidden class. So by default, it's hidden. And I'll see you. Still, when we click it, nothing's happening because we have to add the JavaScript code. So if we go into the app JavaScript and controllers, We'll see that we have our drop down controller that we generated. And I'm going to need to set this up. So we need to add our targets. 
which we only have a menu target. And then I'll just change the connect to the toggle method. We're gonna take an event. We're gonna have to prevent the default, which means like right now when you click on this, it's actually changing the URL, it's adding the slash, or it's adding the hashtag. But we can cancel that by doing prevent default so that it actually doesn't change the URL at all. And we're gonna need to do that actually. So we're gonna prevent default and then we're gonna just toggle. So we'll say this dot menu target. We can actually just say class list dot toggle hidden. So if it has it, it'll remove it. And if it doesn't, it'll add it. So like this, see, we could click it as many times and it works. Now this is pretty good, but one thing you'll notice is when you click anywhere else on the page, uh, we'd expect this to kind of close by itself, but it doesn't. So to fix that, we just need to add another method. So on, let's go back to the navbar partial. And we we'll just add the uh, listener right next to the data controller. We'll say data action. And we're gonna have to listen for clicks on the window. So we'll say click at window. And then we're gonna go to the drop down. We're gonna make a new method called close if outside of menu or something like that. I don't know. It could be you could call this whatever. Close if outside of menu. And then we're gonna take the event. What we're going to do is we're going to check if e dot target we'll say if this dot element so like the whole drop down if it contains it that means that we're good so we're going to check actually if not this contains it so this is like click outside of data so like anywhere outside of this if we click We'll cancel it. Although I don't know if that's actually how we want it to be because you'll see data dropdown is actually wrapping the whole menu. So if we still click over here, it wouldn't close it with this logic. It's kind of tricky. So I think we're gonna have to do, um, yeah, we're gonna have to think about this a little bit smarter. I think instead of doing, instead of adding the data controller on the whole nav bar, we're gonna have a, another div. That's probably the best way to do it right here. What the heck? I accidentally deleted a bunch of stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna add a second div inside of here. We're gonna add this code and then we're gonna wrap all of this. And now that should work as expected. So if it's if this dot element contains, yeah, then we're going to close it. In. Although we don't want to add like we don't want to just keep doing this. We only only want to check if not this dot menu target that contains hidden. So we'll only add it if it doesn't already have it. Because this method is gonna run over and over again. Actually, like every time we click, it's now gonna run that code to check if it should close it. Let's see, it does close it, but if we click like on the menu, it doesn't close. Although now that we added the sep second div. The styling is a bit off. Let's see if we can fix that. We can do like left zero to push it. Okay, left zero goes all the way over. Okay, we don't want that. I think uh, on this drop down div now, I think we need to add a class of relative to make the absolute stick to this class. Although still, this doesn't know that. Because I think this class, let's do a background on it just so we can see it a little bit better. See, it's as I <laughs> actually blue is probably a bad color since that's the color of the avatar. But you see that this is how much space our thing is taking up. That's why when we do left zero, it's not right. But I think we can do left 56. So it actually puts itself over. Oh, I think we need to do negative. Negative left 56, which hopefully will push it over. I don't know. It kind of does. It kind of does. I think we could turn it down a little bit, left 40. All right, that's getting better. Although I want like a little bit of padding. Dang, this is kind of tricky. Oh, 36 might do it. Although wouldn't that, no, that would push it farther over to the side. <laughs> this is silly. Okay, we can do custom values in Tailwind. If we do square brackets, we can put anything. Could actually put like the pixel, although that's probably a bad idea. 
because I'm pretty sure it changes. You do rem. Rem's a good way to do like relative styling. Probably want to do like 12. Little drop down, then you could click my profile, you click settings. And then when you click anywhere else, really, it just closes. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna delete this BG pink. And all right, cool. So we have our drop down. Oh, it would also be good to put a home button. We don't even have a home button on this side. Uh, let's do that in the nav bar. So I'm gonna quickly change this from justify and justify between so that we can have our home button on this side. And then I'm just gonna add an A. We could either do an A or we could just do a link to. I guess I'll do link to because that's Ruby. Link to home. This is just gonna go to slash. And we can make this kind of stick out with the white. All right, let's reload. Mm -hmm. Already there's a little bit of an error. Was that an, oh, my link, I forgot to close off my link with the Ruby code. I don't know why it's not doing that for me, but all right, perfect. So we can go home and we can also go profile, which right now profiles the setup and then we can go settings. All right. So to get the profile first, we need to have the slug so that we can set up the URL to make like the public profile because we could always make an internal profile, but we're trying to make the public profile. So we need a slug. So I'm going to add the slug on the user model and then we're going to be able to change it here. So let's quickly do that. I'll go into the console, Rails G migration, add slug to users. And then slug is just going to be a type string. And if we look at what that added, just added a column called slug. Perfect. We can migrate the database. I'll even restart too. And then I'm going to want to add that field here. So we'll go into the device folder in the registrations uh, edit really it's just gonna be edit and then I'll add a field for the slug oh also in the edit we don't even have the first name fields let's quickly add that so we'll go over to the new where we had first name last name and I'll go and drop that in the edit and on top of the email fields and also I'll take off the autofocus because I don't think we need that just get here now we can edit it better we can edit first name last name email all this stuff and then what i'll do is i'll add the field for slug it'll be a text field if we see that we don't even have a slug right now so probably when a new user is created we're going to want to set them a slug so to do that, uh, we can go in the user model, but let's not worry about that first. Let's just worry about if he wants to set his slug. So like my one wants to be Indigo Tutorials. I should be able to just update this. Although we also need to permit it for device, just like we permitted the first name, last name. So we'll go with the application controller where we have this uh, device configuration and we're just gonna add the slug. That's another attribute that we're allowing to be updated. All right. No, I really don't need to reload there, but we're going to do this. We're going to update. Uh, it says current. Oh, so I guess. See, like the, the device form is so annoying, but we need your current password to confirm your changes. If you're going to update the user form. So that's maybe why we don't want to have the slug there. But anyways, now we should have a slug. If I'm going to go quickly check. User dot last. Wait, slug is nil. Okay, this is weird. Oh, and we have a big error. Unpermitted parameters. First name, last name, slug. Wait, why? Oh, I think I see why, right? Perimeter. So, look, we're permitting for sign up these keys, but I think we also need a permit for what? Oh, okay. So, they're extending the sign up, see? Registrations create. We need to extend the account update. All right, that's kind of what I thought. So we'll just copy this. 
go down here and we'll do account update. And then now we're permitting for sign up and we're also permitting for account update. And maybe this will work. Let me set my slug. Oh, I forgot I have to put my password. <laughs> Create the password down here. It says it was updated. I think I think it actually worked this time. Now if we go on the console, user dot last. Wait, what the fuck? It's still not passing the slug. That's crazy. But it didn't show error or anything too. Update users were slug. Like why did it not update though? Oh slug. It should have updated. <clears throat> first name, last name, first name, last name, slug. So see it should have updated. And it still says that it's there. Wait, I'm so confused. <laughs> Why does it show up like it's... Uh, oh, I'm wondering... You know what? I think I'm doing user.last, which is like bomb bomb. But I think we need to make sure we're checking the right user. User.first. Oh, yeah. So see, we do have a slug. User.first slug. Indigo tutorials. All right, perfect. Now, one thing we're going to want to make sure is that the slug is unique. So I'm going to quickly go to the model user model and let's add a validation for this so we'll say validates slug uniqueness true so now we wouldn't be able to have another user with the same slug all right now if we just go to over here and we want to create a new account well, I, don't, I don't remember because i know i want to sign in with that guy but i just forgot what his what his gmail is <laughs> It's too random. Too random. Anyways, if we sign up. Oh, it already says slug has already been taken because. Well, because it's unique, but the slug is nil. So <laughs> let's quickly fix that by um, probably just adding an action here. We could do before create. Commit, I think this is how you do it. And then we can say set slug. Now set slug is gonna be a private method. Set slug. And what we're gonna try to do is say self.slug equals full name, except for we're gonna wanna parameterize it. Which I don't remember how to spell. Okay. Self.slug full name dot parameterize. And then this is before create, so then it should save it and it should set it up oh except for they don't have anything called before create commit was it not i think there's before commit which would happen for everything all right let's say before create then there's like a little setup method just to set the default slug all right so for this guy Sign up. Oh, this slug has already been taken. Dang it. Okay, I need to find the callback then. There is a callback that will work. I just need to figure it out. Active record callbacks. Let's just take a look and see which one is going to do best. Creating. Yeah, I want to go before. Oh, before, I think before validation. Because since that's going to trigger the validation, let's just do, although this will happen every time. So we got to be careful with that. Hmm. How about before save? No, because that could happen for updating too. You could do before create. But I think that will, I think it won't give itself enough time. What I mean is like, see, it says, even though it's before create, it's still after the validations. 
We need to find a good workaround. Hmm. Uh, we could, okay, let's do a before state, or let's do a before validations. But then let's only do it if... So we can actually pass a proc, and then we can say if slug.nil. So we're only going to set the slug if it's nil. And that should do what we want. So I'm going to pull up my second account, and I'm going to go ahead and try to create the sign up again. Before... <laughs> Why did I make it plural? I didn't mean to do that. New guy, new guy. <laughs> we sign up. Oh, now the passwords don't match. I'm just getting tired of this. All right, bet. So I think we did it, and then it should have also created a slug. Let's see what the slug is. Slug is new dash guy. So actually, perfect. Now the only problem here is like, what if oh, we need a button to sign up? So let's add a sign up button real quick. Uh, back on that nav bar. So we're going to views, layouts, nav bar. And I'm just going to quickly add link to sign out. I'm going to destroy user session path. Then we're going to make this. This has to, to sign out, it has to make a delete request. So we're going to use turbo for that by setting a data turbo method type delete. And now this will actually work for signing out. So on this new guy, I want to sign out and then just, you know, create another new guy. Let's see if we can test this. Well, first of all, the, the email does have to be unique device, but right now our slug, it has to be unique. But once we try to set it, it'll say like there's already a new guy. See, slug has already been taken. So we need to do some work around here in the user model. I'm actually gonna need to check, is there already a user who has this? Basically, so this is like, say slug equals, possible slug. <laughs> right, it's really just full name dot parameterized. What we'll do is we'll check user dot where slug user dot find by, and we're gonna have to do like more uniqueness on it. Self dot slug equals full name parameterized plus secure. Wait, wait, what am I doing? random.uid so <laughs> basically if you don't have if there's already a user with that slug we're just gonna add a freaking long uid which that might not be a good maybe we'll do a hex of like six else you're gonna get the <laughs> your name and then you always can update this later so this is our new set slug with more logic so if we find a user by this, then we're going to have to, you know, add a hex on it. Else, you can have the regular name. Now, let's see. Add my new guy. Sign up. And it worked successfully. But our, our slug is probably pretty crazy. Whoops. All right. So now let's go and add the actual profile page. We'll go back to the routes.rb and we'll add back that route that we were working on earlier. Why don't we just add it up here? We'll do a get slash slug. And then two, let's create let's create up a controller called profile to profile show. So we're gonna have a controller. Uh, profile controller rb. Wait, did I, why did I make a folder? We need a file. 
Okay. So profile controller. And we're make the class. It's gonna inherit from the application controller. And we're gonna have show action. Alright, and then inside of here, we're gonna try to find that user. So let's say user equals find by slug param slug. And now if we can't find a user, we're just gonna have to redirect. Let's just redirect to the root path and we'll do an alert like sorry, couldn't find the user. We could even pass them back to param slug like what they gave us. All right, and this should already be set up, but let's let's also add the template just so that we don't get an error. So we'll go in the views, we'll add a folder called profile, and then a file that'll match our our action, which is show HTML to ERB. Inside of here, this is where we'd add the full profile. But right now, I'm just gonna say like, Hello, welcome to your profile. And then let's see if this even works. Let's go back in the browser and let's just say like we go to like <laughs> random profile, blah, blah, blah. Let's see, and then we get this thing. Sorry, I couldn't find a user for this. Now if we want to go to my profile, oh, let's set up the my profile link to work. So let's go back to the layout nav bar. And then we're going to change this to actually go to our, it's basically just going to be slug or it's going to be slash and then Current user dot slug, just like this is the URL that we're gonna go to. I don't even know if that slash is necessary, but I think it is because if you don't do the slash, if you're in a like let's say you're in like post slash new, and then you click my profile, it would actually try to go to just posts. It wouldn't go to your profile, so that's why you need the slash. But let's see if the uh, does this work. My profile. Wait, I tried to go to my profile and it says we couldn't find a user account for this. Really? Going to my profile, no way. So let's make sure that the parameter is actually coming through. So if you see what happens, we're starting get as HTML and then we have the slug, which should be the correct slug. Now in the profile, so something's going wrong. User dot find by slug, param slug. Oh, because Look, we're redirecting. We didn't even check. <laughs> if not, user. <laughs> so we're just doing that for everybody right now. <laughs> so we need to put that in a condition so that for my profile, it actually brings. So yeah, see, perfect. Now it shows, hot, hello, welcome to your profile. And then even if I come over with this guy, you should be able to go to his profile now. See, hello, welcome to your profile. Although it wouldn't look like this we would actually put the guy's name and everything. Let's go and start working on that. We'll go into our profile show and then right up here in the H1, we'll probably just put like the actual dude's name. So user dot full name. And then for right now, we don't even really have anything to put here, uh, but we can at least like show all of his posts. We go right here, we can say current user dot post dot each view post. Oops. And then we're gonna render the post from actually the post post. I'm gonna pass in this. Oh, and that should display all the posts. That guy doesn't have any posts, but this guy does. Oh, let's quickly fix the styling because it looks like everything's just in a row right now. Uh, let's change this to add a div. Flex, flex call. Item center might be nice. I think we can push the items in the center. Uh, let's take a look at that. All right, so yep, it's centering it. I do want to make this the, the name like a little bit bigger. Instead of text XL, oh, because we're doing two, I'm doing text XL and then text for XL. All right, let's reload. We should have the bigger text. And then it would be nice to kind of position this to a little bit better with the posts. I think in the post, we'll do another div. And then, uh, oops. 
let's say that this is width full. Also flex flex call, and then there's just gonna be a gap between the posts. Let's see what that looks like. Perfect. So we get the new post. Oh, on the profile page, I was doing it off the current user. That's so silly. It needs to be the at user dot post dot each. So that I can show the post for the user. Alright, so the reason that we're not showing the show link is because we have this condition right here checking if the action name is not equal to show. So even though the controllers are different, this profile, I still use the show on the show page. We actually don't even need this condition at all. We can always show this since we're not trying to change it up if it's the show page because I'm not even using that inside of the show page. All right, so now it works as expected. You go to your profile, you can see your posts. And if someone else goes to your profile, they can also see your posts. All right, so from here, we already have a working app where on the home page there's a feed of all the new posts. You can also view your own profile and you can share this link with other people who would then be able to go and view your profile too. So it's really cool. And there's like so many additions we can go from here. So many other things. Like one thing that might be nice is on this page, it might be nice to have a button that says like view more posts by the author or something. So we go to the post show page and maybe right in their body, we'd have a link to like, and all this would really do is just go to their profile page. Should be slash post.user.slug. And if we reload, we'll see we have this button, few more posts by author. We'll click on that. And if I wanna add some space, I'm just gonna do a BR underneath to push that edit link off. And then we just have this link right here, view more posts by author. We could probably make this more known as a link by adding an underline. And then also adding some space between this. Let's do instead of, let's do MC6 MB4. So it'll, it'll show the body and then we'll have the link, you know, view more posts by author, which will just go to the profile. All right, so we built this app, the basic setup for LinkedIn. Now I do want to build in the work experience section, which that would just be a scaffold for work experience. And then I would add a few fields like the start date, end date, and then description. So you could do that on your own. If you want to challenge yourself, I would say that you should do that. And then also connecting with other users where I would create some sort of friendship model where you can connect and the other user has to accept the friendship or like the friend request before your friendship is created. But this video has already been getting pretty long. So I'll probably do those things in a part two to building LinkedIn. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned some new things about Rails and how to build web apps. Yeah, and stay tuned for new videos.